The C-SPAN networks bring you long-form public affairs programming from the nation's capital and are a public service of your television provider. C-SPAN, created by cable. Evan McMullen is an independent presidential candidate. Mindy Thin is a vice presidential candidate, both joining us from Salt Lake City. Thank you very much for being with us. Great to be with you. Evan Thank McMullen, you. let me begin with you by the numbers. How many states are you on the ballot, and how many do you qualify for write-in votes, and how do you try to get to 270 electoral votes? Well, we will appear on the ballot of 11 states, and then we will uh, be registered as a write-in in in a number of others that will total, uh, including the the ballots where we appear actually on the ballot, uh, 43 to 45 states by Election Day. So the vast majority of Americans will be able to cast a vote for us. Uh, but uh, but the reality is that reaching 270 votes on November 8th is, is going to be very, very difficult, uh, given the fact that we're a three-month presidential campaign and, and as a result also of related circumstances. Uh, but our strategy is different. We're, that is not actually our strategy. Our strategy is to win as many states as we can in, in hopes that if the election is close between Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump, we could block them both and prevent them also from gaining a majority in the Electoral College, that 270 vote threshold. And then in that case, the election would go to the House of Representatives where we like our chances. Mindy Finn, one of those states, Utah, where you are today, and it has not voted for a Democrat since 1964. And yet with Governor Mike Pence campaigning there today as part of the Trump-Pence ticket, it's very much in play. Why? Well, Utah is a conservative state, and Donald Trump is, is no conservative. Throughout his entire adult life, he was liberal on abortion, on health care, on the Second Amendment. He changed those positions to run as a Republican. In the primary here in Utah, they rejected Donald Trump, and they've had concerns about him from the beginning. And it's, it's impacting their views on the Republican Party. More so than Republicans, they are conservative. We're the only conservative ticket in this race. We're standing on principle foundational constitutional principles, and that's why they're gravitating towards our campaign. Evan McMullen's story today in the New York Times, deep divisions within the GOP, a lot of questions, what happens after the election. Let me go back to your earlier point. What role do you and your running mate want to play, and where do you see the future of the GOP heading? Well, we definitely be, believe that our role will be as a part of a new conservative movement, the very movement that we're building here as a part of this election. Uh, the question is, what role will that movement play? Uh, we do leave some possibility. We believe that the, the Republican Party may reform after this election. But having both uh, had direct experience with that effort uh, from within the party, uh, we know how difficult it is and, and believe that these are challenges that the party will face uh, on a generational basis. So uh, it's very difficult to imagine that the Republican Party will be able to shake off Trumpism uh, after this election. Uh, these problems existed before Trump entered the race. Uh, we knew about them after 2012. The party wasn't able to adapt, however. And now that Trump has had the success that he's had, even if he loses badly in, this, in the general election, uh, the people who are supporting him, I think, are, are empowered and will be empowered even after the election. So the reality is, is that uh, we believe this conservative movement may need to take the form of a new political party. Uh, it's just uh, simply true that those of us who are constitutional conservatives, who believe that all men and women are created equal and that we all have inalienable rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, and that government should be limited and that it only derives power from the people and from no other source, those of us who had a fundamental believe these things can in no way support a party that goes down the, the road of populism and, and white nationalism, which is where Donald Trump would like to take it. So if that's what the Republican Party is going to be, there's just no way that Mindy and I can be a part of that. And, and we have millions of people across the country supporting us, uh, many of whom feel the same way. So let me be clear. Are you saying that we could see a new political party, the Republican Party divided basically in half the creation of a new party? Yes, I, I think that is very much a possibility. And let me go back to this idea of Trumpism, Mindy Finn, because it's not only Donald Trump, but 13 million voters in the primaries supporting him. He beat out 17 candidates. And so there is a base within the GOP where the Trump message has resonated. What do you say to those voters? Well, I say that, you know, I, their frustration, some of it is, is founded. 
well-founded in that they have been left behind. Uh, we have an economy that's been transformed because of technology and due to automation. Many of them have lost their jobs or they're facing wage stagnation. The party for too long has been more focused on those who write the big checks and not the base, the people who are voting for them. So that frustration is very real. However, Donald Trump, while maybe a very loud, bombastic voice, is one that is really just is kind of using them for his own political power. He's been a liberal for all of his adult life. And more so than that, he's tearing the country apart and undermining our democracy by demeaning Hispanics, African-Americans, women, people with disabilities. We are now we are a country who had legitimate reason to distrust institutions, but now we're being ripped apart by a man who demeans all those groups and then even calls into question um, whether our democracy is rigged. People are turning in on each other. The Republican Party is falling apart. There's no body anymore for conservative values. And so we need to think about the future. And that's what we represent is this new generation of leadership who understands the concerns of those same voters that gravitated towards Donald Trump, who liked the fact that he talked directly and plainly and, and to them. But, but we have a positive vision and one that can unite the country, not one that's going to tear us apart. And finally, Evan McMullen, what will the headline be the day after the election? Who wins the presidency? Who wins the House and the Senate? Hmm. Well, you're asking me to do something that's very difficult, of course. I, you know, I, I believe that the polls probably reflect uh, the accurate uh, state of the race and that Hillary Clinton is dominating Donald Trump very strongly. Uh, I would expect, sadly, her to win and be our next president. Um, but, you know, whether it's her or Donald Trump, I think they're both people who want to grow the size of government and who don't respect our Constitution in the way that Mindy and I believe it should be. Uh, and so that's what I think the outcome will be at the presidential level. Uh, I believe that uh, Republicans will likely hold on to the House and the Senate is is that's a, a less certain. Uh, and I, I just don't know. It's hard to predict. But I think Donald Trump is is definitely making it much more difficult for Republicans to hold on to the Senate and to, for them to hold on to the margin that they have had in the House for the last couple of years. Evan McMullen, Mindy Finn, independent presidential and vice presidential candidate, joining us on the campaign in Salt Lake City, Utah. Thank you both for being with us here on C-SPAN. We appreciate it. Thanks for having us. Thank you.